Hello, this is Harker Devine, and today we are going to be e reading SCP-3369, The Living Joke. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. I have a number. 3369, Level 3 Confidential. Object Class, Euclid. Shuffling Class is Kinnick, and Risk Class is Caution. Special contain procedures. Foundation web crawlers are, re are to routinely e-search com the base website, social media, and other potential online vectors for instances for instances of SCP-3369. Such instances are to be logged, traced, is back to the source, and deleted. All reports miss as hysteria, upswings of auditory hallucination diagnosis, or similar sudden onsets of mental illness in a single area are to be investigated for links. To SAP 3369. <clears throat> Little Task Force 57 Stamp Citizens are to be mobilized upon confirmation of an outbreak, and all carriers of SAP 33691 are to be questioned and administered Class A of NES 6. A single copy of SCP-3369 is to be kept in written format in storage locker 33B at site 28. Under no circumstances is SCP-3369 to be transcribed into digital format except on air gapped computer during testing. Between 1 and 5 D-class personnel may be kept as continual carriers of SCP-3369 and 1 for the purposes of testing and continued cooperation from SCP-3369-1. D-class carriers are to be administered class C of Nexus prior to any scheduled termination. Non-D-class are to be infected with SCP-3369 and 1 only for interviewing purposes and are to be administered class A of Nexus upon interview and conclusion. Personnel found attempting unauthorized spread of SCP-3369 and SCP-3369-1 are to be disciplined. If necessary, and when applicable, transferred away from Site-28. Description SCP-3369 is a magnetic agent in the form of a humorous anecdote that, when understood by an individual, implants a distinct consciousness into the individual's mind. This effect is triggered regardless of the medium and is present in both live and recorded versions of the anecdote. Testing has shown that the wording of the anecdote is not required to be exact. Translations of SCP-3369 into languages other than English could have been shown to have the same effect, and alteration of the 60% of the anecdote's wording still causes infection, as long as the central theme of the anecdote remains intact. SCP-3369-1 is a sapient consciousness that is generated by SCP-3369's magnetic effect. Multiple instances of the consciousness are, to, are able to exist concurrently, and its awareness is shared among these is carries or surface is it is it's capable of speaking to any infected individual referred to as a carrier, hearing the carrier surface thoughts and perceiving the outside world via the carrier senses. SCP 33691 is able to listen and share to the senses of a currently unknown number of carriers concurrently, but it can only speak to a certain carrier at any given time. All individuals treated with SCP 30 the 3691 have uniformly described it as a male voice speaking English with a New York accent. SCP-3369 and SCP-3691 were discovered at the Foundation investigated similar reports of auditory hallucinations in the Brooklyn and Borough of New York City. The anomalous nature of the anecdote and implanted consciousness were confirmed during an interview with a Mrs. Blank on 20 Blank, September 12th, or no, wait, September 17th. Okay, yeah. Apparently, I can't read. Interviewee, redacted. Interviewer, Agent Theodore Johnson. Begin log. Good evening, Miss Redacted. I'm Agent N. Johnson with the CDC. Would it be alright if I asked a few questions? I'm not in any trouble, am I? No, not this time. We've had reports of a possible terror attack involving the use of a new type of... Aerosol-based drugs? We're just checking in with people in the area who have been who have recently been for a sudden onset of hallucinations. Oh, is that what happened? Oh god, it's not poisonous, is it? We have no reason to believe so, but we do need to learn as much as we can about it. 
You think you may have an, an expose? Yes, it. Mrs. Redacted pauses and glances over her shoulder with mild annoyance. Sorry, yes, I've been hearing a voice in my head for the past few days, and it's just started getting louder. Under what circumstances did you start hearing this voice? Ever since I went to see the com that comedian the other day, uh, what's his name, over at the at new place? The Redacted, I tried to get Redacted to go with me, but he just wouldn't. Sir, man. I guess it's fair he didn't, though, huh? I suppose so. Do you remember anything unusual happening at the show before you started hearing his voice? Not really. That guy, Andy, that's his name. He was saying a joke that, um, I think it went... Bag Hazard, redacted. Anyway, then he started talking about llamas or something. I wasn't really paying attention at that point since... Jesus! What, is someone... is something wrong? Ma'am, is your husband at home? No, he's at work right now. Why? I just heard someone say my name. Like it was right behind my ear. Oh. Oh boy. And log. Interviewer. SCP... Interviewee, SCP-3691. Interviewer, Agent Theodore Johnson. Forward, interview took place during Agent Johnson's quarantine after the infection event that occurred during Mrs. S. Redacted's questioning. Agent Do Johnson and transcribed the interview as it was conducted. Begin log. Hello, can you hear me? I think you're me. Hey, hello, hello, is this thing on? <laughs> Just messing with you, Agent. I can hear you loud and clear. Good, I'm going to be asking you a few things. Fire away, Chief. Better than the silent treatment you've been giving me so far. I suppose we should go ahead and get the most obvious question out of the way. Who are you? What, like a name? You and the eggheads keep calling me SCP-3369-1. I guess that's as good a name as any. It ain't no Louie or Frank or whatever, but forget about it. A little more broad, then. What are you? Is that a joke, Agent? Ha, <laughs> get, is that a joke? Because, you know, I'm a joke. Specifically, yeah, I'm that joke. The one you keep trying not to think about. You can read my mind. Hey, well, no need to get your knickers in a bunch, guy. Just a little stuff. Even less from you than, than most people. And let me tell you, Mrs. Redacted, her inner monologue was going a mile a minute all the time. Forget about it. Okay, so you're a joke that's turned into a voice in my head. How does that work? Hello, Vito, Agent. I just work here. Fine, so how do I get rid of you? Ah, uh, now that's just hurtful. Following interview 33... E six nine one oh one. It was found that the application of a next six target a carrier's memory of SP thirty three sixty nine subsequently removes SP thirty three sixty nine and one from their consciousness. This does not remove memory of SP thirty three sixty nine one itself, which requires either a secondary or broader or primary application. Agent Johnson was given a class A of Nessex and returned to active duty. Based on testimony given by a Miss Bla Miss is redacted in other careers. Andre Benaventi, a sound comedian, the doctor is under his stage name of Andy Goodtimes, was located and interviewed on 20 blank September 22nd. Interviewee, Andre Benaventi. Interviewer, Agent Theodore Johnson. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me, Mr. Benaventi. Sure, no problem, detective. It always got time for our boys in blue. What's this all about? I want to talk to you about your last performance in the redacted. Ah, crap. I kind of thought it might be that. Look, I don't know what the hell happened there. Sorry. All I know is I was in the middle of my act. Everything was going great. And all of a sudden, people just started to get all quiet. Like they'd stop laughing. And a bunch of them started getting up and walking out after a while. Ah, redacted. Imagine, right? He said that there must have been something screwed with the sound system or something. 
Because some people will even complain that they kept hearing somebody talk over me. Even had a few ask for their money back. Where's hell, let me tell you. And a bit of a blow to the old pocketbook, you know? What's worse, I've had a couple of people trying to sue me over some kind of hearing problems I've been having. But I swear, I don't know anything about it. We're not accusing you of anything. We just want to find out what happened. At what point in your show did the trouble start? Jeez, I don't know. It's hard to say. When you're on stage, you just kind of get into it, yeah? But I think when I've been around at the time I started telling the story about the llamas, I remember the a part about Petromimetic Hazard redacted. Stop! I mean, thank you. Thank you, that's enough. Mr. Benaventi, where did you come up with that particular joke? You mean the one about the... Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, the one that ain't about the llamas, right? I gotta tell you, Detective, I don't know where a llama material comes from. I know it's the same old cop off of BS you hear from any artistic type, but it's really true. Sometimes I just wake up in the middle of the night and write something down, and then in the morning, I try to turn in something that'll make you laugh. This one, though, yeah, okay. This one was kind of weird. Weird to how? Well, see, most of the time, I might write down two or three words. Waiting for coffee, or jogging, hogging sucks, sucks ass, or whatever. More clever than that, I mean, you know. Anyway, this one. It was like, I don't know, like I had this little voice swinging in the back of my head, and bam -o! I wrote down the whole damn thing just like it is in, in my show. Then I went right back to sleep. Hmm, then it's weird. Have you heard that little voice since then? Nah. And between you and me, detective? If this is the sort of crap that's gonna happen when I do, I think that's probably all for the best. End log. Following the interview, your Mr. Ben Leventi's written copy of SCP-3369 was confiscated. He was then given amnesis and re-exposed to SCP-3369. But testing did not reveal all infection finances of SCP-3369-1. The reason for this immunity is not known at this time. Mr. Benaventi was amnestied again and released. He has been designated person of interest 336901 and put under indefinite observation. Interviewee SCP-3369-1 Interviewer Dr. Porter or, or Mills Senior Researcher Forward The first interview conducted with SCP-3369 Nine one implanted it into the conscious of a foundation researcher. A reported procedure was given after testing it concluded that SCP-3369-1 is unable to break through, break through with standard mental or fortification training and therefore unable to directly access any knowledge regarding the foundation. Begin log. <clears throat> Hello, SCP-3369-1. My name is Dr. Mills. How are you feeling today? I'm doing just swell, Doc. My name is SCP-33691, and I'll be your joke for the evening. Can I get you anything? Actually, I have something to ask you a few questions. Ooh, is this like some kind of medical exam? Height, weight, favorite pizza toppings? Something like that. The organization I work for would like to learn more about you. Yeah? Well, your organization has got a funny way of showing it, Doc. You know how to keep knocking parts of me out? Ah, yes. Sorry about that, but until we do learn more, I'm afraid we need to keep you under quarantine. Not everyone has been reacting very well to your presence. Yeah, okay. I get that. How this one guy that just won't quit screaming when I tried talking to him? Didn't make for a great conversation, let me tell ya. I can imagine. But it is for that reason that we have to ask you for your cooperation for the time being. Ugh, jeez. Ask the world why don't you? Look, that's... it ain't really how I operate. But I get where you're coming from. Sure, I want people to laugh when I talk to them. Not on making their pants, you know? So yeah, sure, I can't make any promises, but I'll try to keep my eye trap shut for now. But could you at least ask like about boys to stick to the knockout pills instead of the junk in the spray cans? That stuff can't be good for the ozone layer. I'll see what I can do. 
Now shall we begin? Shoot. Do you know a Mr. Beneventi? Oh hey, yeah, good old Andy. How's it doing these days? Last before I read, he was doing just fine. How did you come to meet Mr. Benevent Beneventi? Yeah, I wish I could tell you, Doc. Things get fun as it going back that far. I mean, heck, what do you remember about being born? Not much, I bet. I see. Why do you propagate the way you do? What's that? Like, why do I get into people's heads? Yes. I don't know. It's kind of stupid, but I'll tell you what, Doc. I'm going to answer your question with a question. Is that so? Go ahead. Am I funny? You do have a, wor a with words, certainly. Nah, nah, not like that. I mean, you know, the joke. The mean joke. I know you heard the joke, right? Or else I wouldn't be here hanging out in your noggin. Are you referring to SCP-3369? Yeah, sure, that thing. So when you heard it, did you laugh? I'm afraid it wasn't quite my type of humor. Oh, uh, wow. I apologize if... No, hey, forget it. Can't please everybody. Everybody's a great. Etc, etc. It's just... Yes? Ah, seriously, it's pretty embarrassing. Okay, it's just that, yeah. Yeah, I know I'm no great sh Oh, wait, sorry. I'm not here to judge. SCP-3369-1, please, I want to hear it. Okay, it's just that... Yeah. Yeah, I, I know I'm no great shakes. It hurts to hear somebody say it out loud, that's for damn sure. But it ain't like I don't know. So yeah, I may have gotten a little obnoxious. Maybe start getting into people's heads when I should not. But if I don't do it, then there ain't nobody gonna give a damn about me, are they? I'd just be another mediocre joke being told by a talentless hack and a third-rate dive. I mean, what good is an idea if nobody's thinking it, right? What good is a joke if it ain't being told? Look, Doc, do you mind if we call it done for today? Not at all, SCP-3369-1. I'm afraid we're going to have to remove you in just a minute. But I'll make sure to use a pill instead for, of the spray. Ha. Thanks, Doc. You're a peach. And that was SCP-3369-1. And the living joke. We don't get to know what the joke is because uh, that could probably cause you to hear the voice too. And also because it isn't real, but you know. Now, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!